So today we're going to continue our talk about order of operations, right? Remember the bed mass uh, mnemonic device to help you remember those, or bid mass if you use the word indices. It makes no difference to me. And we're going to look at what happens when you have some fractions, and then we're also going to look at how we can use the order of operations to work with a calculator. And the fraction one is something that troubles students. So we're not talking really about working with fractions, adding, multiplying, dividing, whatever fractions. What we're talking about is um, a piece of fractions or some information about fractions that you may or may not have ever seen before. Okay, You know that a fraction consists of a numerator and a denominator. All right? No big deal there. Top number is the numerator, bottom number is the denominator. But what you may not know is that every numerator and every denominator, hopefully you're writing these down, right? Remember, you're supposed to be taking good notes. Every numerator and denominator is enclosed in a bracket. Now, we don't normally see the brackets. They don't, we don't write them. Because since we assume they're there, or since we know they are there, we don't usually write them. So think about it, some things that you absolutely know, right? Okay. If I tell you uh, to go to school, you know what that means. You know where this, what school I mean, so I don't have to say, you need to go to Queen Margaret at 53 Hobson Street or whatever, right? So things that you absolutely know, you don't usually mention, right? Does that make sense? I need to get a yes or a no or a yeah. or an of course or something. Okay. Of course. <laughs> of course we know that. All right, good. That works for me. So because because we know they're there, we don't typically write them. But when we start, because they're not there, sometimes it causes students problems when you think about the order of operations. So in reality, every fraction is numerator enclosed in brackets, denominator enclosed in brackets. And what, according to the order of operation, does a bracket tell you? You need to do that when? First. First, exactly. So that tells us that we always need to simplify the numerator and then simplify, simplify, hmm. simplify the denominator before you deal with that fraction bar, and the fraction bar indicates what operation? Division. Divide or division, you betcha. Okay? So, and we're not used to this, and so it's difficult for students, and, and especially when you're using a calculator to be able to, to, to work with these simplification problems. So, for example, if you have 15... over 3 plus 2, I could divide 15 by 3. I mean, it divides evenly, in other words. But I cannot do that because what this is telling me is that I have to do that 3 plus 2 before I do the division. Okay? And so especially when you're entering this in a calculator, you're going to see this exact problem when you enter it in calculator in a moment. You have to put that in. So that has to be 15... And 3 plus 2 is going to give you 5 in the bottom. And 15 divided by 5, of course, is 3. Okay? So even though the original problem... Let's just go ahead and write the original. Even though the original problem did not have a bracket, we must assume it's there. And when you're using a calculator, you have to put them in there because... Your calculator doesn't know 
to assume that they're there, okay? It, has to, it can only do what you tell it to do. And that's, a, that's why using a calculator for these kinds of problems can be a little bit tricky, right? I cannot tell you how many times I have had students come to me, and I'm talking about students at university, and say, no, Mr. Self, the answer is three because my calculator says it is. <laughs> like, well, you didn't enter the information properly on your calculator, so what your calculator says is wrong. <laughs> so you've got to be really careful because we trust. Hi, Mr. Self. Yes. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I came in a bit late. Okay, that's no problem. Okay, we're just talking about order of operations with fractions. Okay. Uh, so. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. No worries. So we're always assume you always have to assume that there are brackets around them. So we depend upon those devices so much that we just believe what they tell us, right? The answers they give us, we just believe them without question. But if you're not entering it in properly, you're going to get in trouble. Okay. So. Say that I have. Oh, it doesn't matter. 2 times 5 over 1 plus 1. Now, I don't see any brackets there to tell me that I need to do them first. But remember that every fraction, no matter what, the numerator and denominator are always enclosed in brackets, right? So that's really saying, and I'm writing it twice, you don't have to. You could just put the brackets around it, or you could just assume they're there, right? Okay? I'm putting it in so that you have it in your notes so that you can really see what's happening. Okay? Now you can clearly see that you need to do the, everything in the top first, then everything in the bottom, and then you can do that fraction bar, which means to divide, right? So in the top, 2 times 5 is going to give you 10. In the bottom, 1 plus 1 is going to give you 2. And of course, 10 divided by 2 is 5. Okay? So. Mr. It, Self? Yes. Um, I just did the, you know, the 15 over um, the 3 plus 2 on my calculator. Uh huh. And then I, it said 3. And then I did it with the brackets, and it still says 3. Okay. Um, and so what you're. So are you using a scientific calculator or a graphing calculator? So you did yeah. not, you did, okay. So some calculators will know the order of operations, but you've got to be careful about when you're putting them in there um, or how you're putting it in there. If you're using one of those, a calculator and you're using the fraction, oops, B over C. If you're using the fraction template, or something like that, then it can tell, it can tell, or if you're using one of those things where it has, where it's putting things in the fraction bar. But if you're not careful about the way you do it, and we'll, I'll, I'll show you an example of that in just a moment. Now, some calculators, well, all calculators have the order of operations built into them, but it depends on how you enter the fraction, okay? So we'll look at that in just a second. Actually, let's just go and look at it right now. So let's look at our one note. So here's that same problem, and it depends on how you enter it into your calculator, okay? And again, some calculators have more capabilities than others. It depends on what kind you're doing. But, so we're going to calculate this first one, this one first. If you just put in 15 divided by 3 plus 2, okay? So the 2 is definitely not part of the fraction, right? So we have to do the 15 divided by 3 first, because division comes before addition. So 15 divided by 3 gives us 5. And then 5 plus 2 gives us an answer of 7. But if that 2 is in the fraction, remember that we have to do that combining, that 3 plus 2 first, which gives us 15 divided by 5, which is 3. So do you see that the placement makes a lot of difference? Okay? And depending on your calculator, again, some of you have graphics calculators, some of you have scientific calculators, some of you have just basic calculators. You're supposed to have a scientific calculator, but depending on your calculator, if you don't use the brackets for this particular problem on the bottom, it won't add the 3 and 2 first. 
it will think that you mean this first one where you're just taking 15 divided by three oh, plus the two. And that's especially true for you guys who like to use that, that thing as a fraction bar. That is not a fraction bar, okay? I hate that. <laughs> and I hate that they were, you were ever taught that because you're gonna learn that in mathematics, that thing, if you have A slash B, that means A or B. It is not a fraction. The fraction bar is always flat. Because what does the fraction bar literally represent? The, 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 the division symbol. Division. And do you write division symbols like that? No. I mean, you could. I mean, you can't. <gasps> Isn't that percentage like that? <laughs> yeah, that looks a lot like a percent symbol. No, you can't do, write them like that. I knew somebody would say it. Nah. No. Okay, so a division bar is always flat, so the fraction bar should always be flat. Okay. Mr. Self? Yes. Um, I just do it on my calculator and it comes up like that. Okay, I can't see what you mean. It comes up like what? It's on, I'll just show you my calculator. Okay, hold on just one second. I did the 15 with the brackets like on the 3 plus 2, and it, it still comes up with 3. Hmm. Can you see that? No, it's too, it's too bad. Either I way, see it. it's still right. Like, because still you're using a graphics calculator, it knows, it knows what you're doing. It's putting the, you put the number in and then the, the division and then the, the pieces, the pieces of it. And so it, 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 it knows. And like I said, different calculators do different things. So some calculators are more advanced than others. So if you're using a more simple, a simple calculator, then you're going to have to put the brackets in, right? But no, but I still put the brackets in and it said three. Right, right, okay, yes. So if you put the brackets in, definitely it'll say three. But if you don't, but if you don't in some calculators, then it won't, okay? And again, it depends on which calculator you have, okay? All right, so what we're gonna do is, all right, I want you to concentrate on a couple of things. Make sure that you know when you need brackets and when you don't, and again, it's going to, it's going to differ depending on which calculator you're using. Not, all, not everybody's using the same calculator, right? Okay. Another thing that we want to talk about is using calculators when you're dealing with signs, sign numbers, integers. Remember, integers have been a big focus of what we've been working on in this, in this section. And so I want to talk about that. Now, when you're talking about signs, there is a definite button for a sign. You'll see the. You'll see a little button that looks like that. Um, sometimes it has. You have a button that has the plus or minus on it. Depending again, it depends on your calculator. And y'all all have different calculators, so I don't know how how it works. And but it's going to that button or this button is the change sign button. Okay. So. What it does is it, change, it will change a positive to a negative or a negative to a positive if you push that button. Now, again, the keystrokes might be different for your calculator than what they're, than what they're showing here, depending on the calculator that you have. Oops, sorry. You've got to be careful about using the change sign button when you want to do a sign or the subtraction button this one will get you that will do the sign rules. Five minus one will be, it will say you're adding a positive five and a negative one. It'll do it fine. But when you're working with just negative numbers, okay, don't use the subtraction button, use the change sign button. Now, most calculators are smart enough, they're going to know that you mean a negative four. So if you do 20, divide, I'm sorry, 20 divided by, and then a minus four, it'll put it in as neg a negative four. But it's a dangerous game, right? If you mean a sign, then use the sign key. If you mean subtraction, then use the subtraction key, right? And again, it may not make much difference to you right now with some of the problems that we're working on, because remember, these are fairly low level. 
but when you start using it to do some so to do more um, advanced algebra concepts, then you need to use this change the sign key. And you need to get used to using it anyway because there are going to be some times when all you need to do is change the sign. And you don't want to re-enter it. You can just hit that change sign key and get the sign you need. Okay? So I want you to practice using that key for a negative instead of the subtraction key. Okay? And again, I'm, I know that right now it's not going to look like it makes any, diff any real difference to your problem. Okay? But as we move forward, remember, we're starting off in little baby steps right now with smaller problems so you can get used to working with the keystrokes. But as we get into more complex algebra, it makes a huge difference. Okay? Just trust me. I know where we're going. <laughs> All right? Okay. So what I'm going to do is just going to go to the assignment so you can kind of see what you're going to be doing today. Let me see. We did that one. It's the one we worked on together and then we did it. So what we're going to do is we're going to work with all kinds of order of operations problems mixed together. We've done these before, right? And then, and so you're going to solve the sum and then write the answer in words in the space provided. And then to make it a little bit of a game, you're gonna find the word underneath, right? So instead of writing your answer in, in numbers, you'll spell it out and then you've got a word search. So a little bit of fun, yeah? Okay? Because you know, you've gotta make math fun even though I know all of you are already think that math is great fun anyway, yeah? Is, if you finish the, um, the questions, do you have to do the word search if you run out of time? Oh, uh, well, we, we have a double period, and you, you have, and we don't see each other until next week, so you can still, you can get it done. Um, okay. Okay. It's not going to take you that long, but, yeah. Okay. Now, the next ones are optional. These are not problems that are in your homework set. All I'm interested in is you're doing the order of operations problems one through 30. That's plenty, okay, right? And you don't have to do them, do them all in one sitting either, but you have, some, you have this class time, take a break, do, work for 15, 20 minutes, take a break, come back, work on a little bit, right? Don't, don't just sit there for hours and hours and hours and hours because you have that many. And but for those of you who do can do them quickly or want to fill them or, or just want more to do because, you know, I know you're looking for more math to do on those weekends since you don't have stuff to do, then there are some more examples here of, um, and this, now they've switched to bid mass, right? Bid mass, bed mass, same difference. Okay? Now those, all of the ones after these, these box ones, all of those are optional. Okay? But this one is homework. And I'd like for you to have it completed by the time we meet again. But, and and the, remember, this homework is to be done with the calculator. So I want this one to be done with the calculator. Right? So it'll make the math pretty easy. What I'm trying to get is for you to get used to the keystrokes. Now, um, it, at the top of the page, it has an icon of a calculator with a cross through. Yeah, well... Just, that's just because we couldn't find any other things. So, how about this? Mr. Self says... Mr. Self? You use a calculator. <laughs> How's that? <laughs> Mr. Okay. Self? Yes. I have a question. So, do we have to write the answers in words? Like, um, no. Like for question you don't have to. Um, okay. You can just you can just write seventeen and then go find the word seventeen. I'm fine with that. Okay. Okay. That that won't hurt me any. Okay. All right. So that should give you some more practice with those. And um, now I have no idea, <laughs> none, about what they're going to do next because we are technically finished 
with what we were going to do with numbers. So what I'm assuming is that they're going to put together some applications style problems, some word problems for us. Okay. So that we can, so that we can then practice how these things would look on an, on an actual assessment, because you know, from the assessments, we don't just give you order of operations problems. You just, or that you enter in your calculator, you're going to have to, you're going to have to decipher things from a, from a word problem. Okay. Also, I sent out to you um, some information about the Otago, Otago uh, Junior Mask Competition, right? Yeah. And that will be held next Wednesday. So we'll use that class time for that for those of you who are interested in the competition. Now, you do not have to sit the test. But if you'd like to, we need to get the the permission forms and everything. And we should have more information about that today. And I'll be sending that out to you because the permission form was not on that thing that I sent you. That's actually the information they sent to us, but I wanted you to have as much information about it as possible. Okay. We've, I've posted those. Remember I've posted those practice tests. So you've seen some of those if you wanted to. So if you want to sit the test, you can use a calculator on it. Um, and, it's there for you if you want it, if you if you're interested in doing it. Um, if you are interested in doing it, we do need to know because the time that you're allowed to sit the test is longer than a class time. So we have to start you at a specific time and end you at a specific time, and uh, that means it's going to bleed into your next class. And I have so I have to know so that the next teacher can make arrangements for that, right? How many nope. questions are there? There are, uh, I think there are eight questions total, but uh, for year nines, you only have to do the first six. Oh, because last year there was only like five. Or five or something like that. And we only had like 20 minutes to do them or something. I don't know, the whole period uh, or something. But, yeah, no, um, are you thinking about those, just those, yeah, I think you're think, talking about the, thinking about the Otago problem solving ones where you only had the five little questions and you have 20 minutes yeah. to work them. Yeah, this is different. This is the junior maths competition. It's, it's, it's much more involved. Mr. Oh. Self? Okay, yes. Um, on Wednesday, next Wednesday, our math period is period six. Okay. So we'll just go into our... So you uh, just slow. Yeah. Oh, that'd be perfect for us then, except that it's period yeah. six. But yeah, it'll just bleed on into the in, into the after school and if, to get your completed time. Um, so I'll have more information about how it's going to be run. It's 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 different. It's different because we can't obviously have you you know go to the auditorium or whatever. So we're gonna have to deal with it some somehow, <laughs> and I'll have more details. But. Uh, if you're interested in doing it, I just wanted you to be aware that we will need your permission slips and all of that. And Mr. Cavanaugh should have all of that information together for us today, or Monday at the latest. Um, or knowing him, he puts the good things together on the weekends too. Okay.